If I look like an amateur building this, then good. That way, if you're a beginner, someone who wants to get into DIY, then you can see for yourself that you don't have to be an expert for starting out building your own stuff. Just try it. Hello and welcome to The Sound is True. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack DIY episode. In this episode, we're going to assemble this. It's an RK003 RetroKit's passive mixer. So when you order the kit, this is what you receive. The circuit board and some components. I'm gonna show you how to solder these, but I won't be showing you how to solder each and every one of the component. It's just gonna be a repetition of the same thing. So I'll show you how to solder each and every one of the type and there's actually just two types to solder in here now there are a few things you have to think about when you're assembling the kit this is the top of the board and here is where you fit your components it's got a white printed silk screen mask over it so it's showing you the orientations of the components what you should start with are these resistor arrays. Now, if you look closely at these, there's usually a marking telling you where the first leg is. And on the board, this leg is marked where it's supposed to go in. So the dot should point towards the output connector. Now for soldering these, what I usually do is I turn the circuit board over after putting them in. And then I just simply bend the leg slightly outwards like that. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And there it is. So now the component should stay in when I solder it. You've got nine of these stereo connectors. They also have an orientation. Now, if you look closely at them, they have a beveled edge on one side. And if you look at the silk screen on the circuit board, the bevel edge goes towards the outside of the circuit board. It's the same for all of the jacks. These can be a bit tricky to fit in there because they've got four legs and the way that they are, <clears throat> come on now. And here you can see that the uh, beveled edge right there points away from the center of the circuit board. But I do suggest that you get into solder the resistor arrays first because these are so tiny so when you've fitted all of the headphone connectors on there you won't be able to touch this. Now there is a site I'll put the link down in the description it's a page where you can go and read up about how solder should look like. I also do suggest that you go and watch some videos on YouTube on how to solder if you don't know how to do that. If I look like an amateur building this then good then you can see for yourself that you don't have to be an expert for starting out building your own stuff. Just try it. So when you're done soldering the first resistor array, you basically solder the other one. Also, when you put in the next resistor array and you bend the leg outwards, it could touch this one. So if you need to cut the leg, then make sure you cut the leg before soldering and not after. Okay, so let's put in the headphone connector. Push it a little bit like that. And now we can solder that one too. Now, as I said in the beginning, do the resistor arrays first. Make sure that the markings are facing the right way. And then you go on doing the headphone connectors. And you also make sure that the bevel edges are pointing outwards from the center of the circuit board. Well, there you go. And then you just continue doing the same thing with the rest of it. So I'm gonna finish up the board. All right, so I've soldered on all of the connectors and it doesn't look like the best job, but it looks functional. The last thing I'm doing is I'm screwing on these rings. And if you look closely, you can see that there's a, an indentation, a cutout in the ring. And those ones should point upwards. And I realized that this would be easier to do before you actually mount these components onto the board, but it seems to go well enough. Before I round this up, I just want you to have a look right there. You can see three empty pads here, these holes. These three pads are just mirroring what the output does. There's actually two channels and a ground in the middle, basically an extra output. So if you're deep into DIY, then you can probably find a use for this. But for anyone else, you don't need to bother with this. You can just start using it. And there it's done. The RetroKits RK003 passive mixer can be used in two ways, as an input with eight outputs for syncing signals or as a signal combiner for audio with eight 
stereo inputs and one stereo output. If you're using pocket operators or Volkas, check these out. They don't need power to run. Build yourself one of these, grab a few friends, portable musical gear and go out in the woods, bring a speaker and then have a lot of fun. Now you can order your own at RetroKits. I'll put the link down in the description and you can go check it out for yourself. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney and me, Jakob Hackett, the SouthEastRoom.com wishes you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.